Welcome to Electron Online. Here we have a more graphical representation of how the orbit of, me of messenger kept on changing each time there was a flyby and also when we had the first deep space maneuver one slowing down the, sp the spacecraft. So there were a total of six encounters with a planet, once with Earth, twice with Venus, three times with Mercury, and we had one slowdown of the spacecraft when we turned on the rocket engines for about 550 seconds, slowing, slowing down the spacecraft by about 315 meters per second. Well, it was an extremely challenging task to try to get into orbit around Mercury, so we had to continue to find ways to get energy out of the spacecraft messenger, and it did require an enormous amount of fuel. So it was a combination of making the spacecraft as light as possible and carrying as much fuel as possible. It turned out that the fuel was more than 50% of the mass of the takeoff weight or the takeoff mass of the spacecraft. And it required six flybys of one of the three planets in order to slow it down sufficiently. So here you can see where the spacecraft was launched, started moving farther away from the sun, came in, cut through the orbit of the Earth, and met up with the Earth for the first time, taking a little bit of the energy out of the spacecraft. Then they did a what we call a deep space maneuver. They turned on the rocket engines, took additional energy out of the spacecraft, slowed it down in order to get it to go to the orbit of Venus. But the first time around, they did not meet up with the planet. It came back up, and of course, whatever energy it had after the deep space maneuver one, it caused it to move back up to a distance away from the sun, equivalent to what it was after the deep space maneuver. But then the second time around, when it got back to the orbit of Venus, it met up with the planet Venus, it took some of the energy out, so then when it went away again from the orbit, it didn't quite go as far away from the sun as it did before. Then it met up with Venus again, got another gravitational tug, slowed it down some more, and now it was ready to go into orbit towards the orbit of Mercury, which is about 0.4 astronomical units away from the Sun. Another maneuver, changed direction, went to the orbit of Mercury, did not meet up with the planet the first time, it went back up to where it was before, came back down, then met up with the planet Mercury, got another gravitational assist, and took some of the energy out of the system so it didn't go as far back away from Mercury as before. Then it went around the Sun three times before it met up with Mercury again. When it met, went up with Mercury again, it got another gravitational tug, it slowed the spacecraft down some more, it went around the Sun three more times, met up with Mercury a third time, got another gravitational tug. This time it was going slow enough so that it didn't go too far away from the orbit of Mercury. And then prior to the insertion, we had one more deep space maneuver in this case, deep space maneuver number five, in order to slow it down enough so that it could catch up to the planet Mercury with not too much velocity, so that finally when the two would meet up a final time, the gravitational force of Mercury was sufficient to pull it in and start moving it around in orbit around the planet. That's called Mercury orbit insertion, which happened on March the 18th in 2011. So you can see that it all was about taking energy out of the system in such a way that each time it swung around, it didn't go quite as far away from the orbit it needed to be in, and it didn't go quite as fast. So eventually, slow enough, gravitationally could be captured by Mercury, and the task was accomplished. It wasn't an easy one, but they figured out how to do it.